Aloha and welcome to the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Chantelle Seville. Today is a very exciting episode. It's all about living the dream with international fashion designer Jason Gretsch. I'm incredibly excited to have him. He's one of the most inspirational people I know. He's all the way in Melbourne, Australia. Now, have you ever wondered what it would be like to live your dream and use your natural talents to do what you love every single day? Well, our guest Jason Gretsch does exactly this. So we will be taking a walk down memory lane with Jason Gretsch with his experience in becoming a fashion design and icon brand. He'll share with us what he does, how he does what he does, what inspires him, where he's been, celebrities he's worked with, and where he's going and where you can expect to see him next. Now stay tuned for this whole episode because you're not going to want to miss anything from it. Now this episode is particularly dedicated to all you savvy chicks out there, you girls with big dreams, little girls, we're all little girls at heart but with all ages and it's never too young to start living your dreams. So without further ado, let's welcome the man himself, Jason Gretsch. Thank you so much for being here, Jason. Aloha! Um, hello. Thank you. <laughs> Happy you, um, you've had a pretty busy time, haven't you? You've been, uh, last week's been absolutely crazy for you with the Brownlow and the Deli Ams. What's it like being all, all over the papers? It's been nuts, really. It's been so overwhelming, but really exciting. It's an exciting time, you know? I love it. So was that something that you ever imagined that you'd be able to do? That you would be Wait. dressing, you know, the, the most known <laughs> girls on the red carpet? Not really. I, I mean, uh oh, you might as well you might as well introduce your dog there. Introduce your dog, Jason. <laughs> Jackson just barking, and so I thought that I'd, you know, when I started, it was just a very um, humble beginning, and I just thought I just wanted to be really successful and really happy and do things I love. So when I um, to last week was actually a really good stamp that says, yes, you're doing a right path. So yes, it's really exciting. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I mean, in, in Australia, because obviously in Melbourne, it's all about the sport. So ha to actually have you dressing on both red carpets and both coming in the best dress, I mean, with uh, having Britt Davis there with Joel Selwood, the captain of Geelong, looking like an absolute fairy tale princess. I mean, that's every little girl's dream. And she just looks amazing and owned that gown. So I think it's a huge combination of what you've created and how you've done it so well for her and then how she walked it and wore it and um, really owned that red carpet. So that pr must have been pretty special to see that. Yes, it was, you know. Um, we've been working with Brit for maybe six weeks. So we um, sat down and we designed something and then we made it and then we changed it. We redid it, we changed again, we redid, we changed again, we redid. I think we did that like about five or six times and then on and then the day before it was all done so and you, you know Brit's been amazing she's a um special needs teacher so that just you know says a lot about her so when I was asked to dress her yeah I put my hand up straight away <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as you would <laughs> wow it's yeah, I, it's one of the most beautiful dresses I've ever seen in my life, and you've done a lot of beautiful creations in yourself. So that was it was pretty special to see you on those papers, and just just made me so proud. I mean, we've known each other for a while now. To see that, I was just like, wow! It was only a matter of time, and that's um, that's neat. And then also, so you also dressed uh, what was it, Tegan Martin, who was Miss yes. Universe Australia at the Delhi Ams. Yes. Oh, we've just, we're sure. just showing one. We're just showing one more of Britt Davis here on the screen, and then we'll uh, we'll get one of Tegan up there on the red carpet. So. Um, yeah, what was it? How did that come about? It came about a good um, friend of mine that's a stylist just called me um, a couple of days before I did the brown lines, and we just, you know, had a chat about what he was after and what look he was after for Teague. And we then, yes, sent a couple of dresses up and bang, you know, really amazing. And yeah. So it's it's a really it can be a really different process depending on it's I guess it's like art as you said with um, with Brits you kind of kept working on it working on it and it, it evolved over time and then with Tegans you just kind of you sort of had a feel of what you knew what to do or how like how do you yeah. decide as a as a designer artist essentially is what you are okay so the truth of it is this with um Brits she's Melbourne based so she 
came and saw us and we, you can know, um, spent a long time doing that. With, um, with Tegan's, hers was something out of our collection. So her style is rain gagas, loved some things. We sent those over and then, yeah, he chose one. We did do some um, tiny changes, but yeah, that was easy. Yeah. Was wow. Like and those sleeves are incredible. We've got the sleeves up on the screen at the moment. They are amazing. What inspired you to do those type of sleeves? I just wanted something with movement. My thing about fashion, it, it's a form of art which sort of has to move. So because that dress is quite structured, I, yeah, uh -huh. I just wanted the arms to move. Beautiful. And so this wasn't your first experience dealing with celebrities as such. I mean, you're no stranger to dealing with a lot of the other well-known celebrity names in Australia and America. I mean, you've yep. you've worked with Delta Goodrum and Kelly Osborne. I mean, we're here in, uh, obviously, the Hawaii that a lot of Americans would probably know Kelly Osborne a little bit more than Delta Goodrum, but Danny Minogue yep. and, you know, even you've uh, done some work with Susan Sarandon. I mean, it just the list goes on and on. But what I do notice is it's often really powerful, confident women that you that you dress, and that really inspires me to see, especially you know, for savvy chicks, these people to aspire to. It's quite a, and I mean, stars in themselves, the voice, the X factor. I mean, is there any sort of show <laughs> that you haven't been on where it's all about people's talent? You know, Australia's got talent. <laughs> I know it's been overwhelming. Yes, I never thought of that, but but yes. Yeah, it's um, uh, and yet. so. And so how did you come across, or how did they come across you, or how did that all happen? You know, I think it's, um, the, the, we live in a big world with social media, so, that, you know, that's a big part of it. We deal with lots of stylists from abroad, and you know, and Australia, and they seem to either see us online or see something we've done in the past, and then, yeah, they just call us and we have a chat. So is it a lot of times the stylist that actually you deal with before the celebrity? Yes. Is that how it works? Yes. So the stylists yes. get a feel for the celebrity and then they, they can choose the designers, I suppose, that would, that would match that, uh, that style? Yes. Yeah. The, the, that's right. So stylists will call us and we'll have a chat with them and then we meet the talent and we have a chat with her, you know? Yeah. So that's and, so do you, are there certain, like, have you ever had a people approach you and it just wasn't the right fit for you? Has that ever happened yes. or? Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's happened. And I think that's important for, you know, for yourself as a designer and that's why you've been able to be so successful is to I choose people that align with your own brand as well because it's not just about them, it's also about, about you at the end of the day um, and protecting your brand and from a marketing background, you've just done an amazing amazing job with that. So um, one of the collections you've done, I mean, you've even done the Australia's um, top model. That's quite exciting. Sophie, oh, yeah. Sophie, who's, she's only 17. I mean, look at her go and just own that dress. Wow. Amazing. So, and again, was that a stylist that came and found you and you just worked with them and? Yes, that's right. Yes. Very, very cool. Um, now the Gladiator range, that was, I mean, I've always loved, uh, every time I've worn your dress, I felt so confident and so amazing, it flipped like a glove. But this Gladiator range that you came out with a couple years at the Fashion Week, where did that even come from? That was insane in my mind. It was so powerful. What was uh, the inspiration you. behind so that, that? Thank you. So that's, um, I was in um, the, the collection before that was Birds of Prey. And that was a really dark, you know, part of my life. I was, you know, t um, dealing with lots of personal issues. So I turned into a bird that kills, basically. <laughs> so 12 months after I became a gladiator because I was strong, I was fearless, I was powerful. So I um, did design things for that character, which I've loved, which was amazing. And, you know, and that all started by um, being at home and watching um, the Gladiator movie. And oh. I was like, yes, yeah, it's me. I want to be that person. <laughs> well, I mean, any of those dresses, I think that if any woman put them on, even if they didn't feel confident, they couldn't not. It just, it was such a powerful range. And that's when, I guess, when we looked at the pictures of the celebrities in the, in the prior images there, a lot of them did choose your Gladiator range to, to wear. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Um, um, 
<laughs> we even had uh, Kelly Osborne on, um, you know, wearing, wearing your gladiator with a snake around her. Now that's taken things <laughs> to the next level. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Um, so why I really wanted to get you on the show is um, you inspire me so much. I mean, I've seen, your, I've seen you over the years and just keep on, on your craft. And as you said, through everything you go through, you bring that in. And that's a true artist to me. And for those watching today, I really want you to be able to share and today and every day after this when they can watch the replay. Um, like, you know, I want to know a bit more about Jason Gretsch, the actual person. And, Getting real with Jason Gretsch is, is really what I'd like to take people, you know, like, who are you and where did you come from and this type of thing. So, when you were little, what did you want to do when you grew up? So, when I was little, I used to want to be a chef. So, I was an apprentice. I did that for about six months. And then I was just dirty. Oh, yeah. I really hated the dirty hands, you know. So, then I went back to just school again and then studied accounting. I did that for two years. Then I um, thought that that was a bit boring for me. It's, you know, it didn't gel. And then I went overseas and I was like, yeah, fashion's it. So I, yeah, came home and studied. So did you ever have a fashion inkling when you were younger, like as a child or? Not, not really at all. I did well, we've got some, we've got some pictures we're showing of you, Jason. It looks like you might have. <laughs> I play with my niece's Barbies and dress those all the time. So you know, it possibly started at that time. So when you were Just overseas, what was it that inspired fashion then to you? You know, from a chef to accounting. Then, what was it overseas that you saw or? So. And again, the truth of the story is I was dating somebody and um, that person loved fashion at that time. I did not, or not, I didn't. I just didn't want to be a designer, you know. I had never really thought about it. And then I um, thought, what will be my sweetest revenge? This person's really broken my heart. What will it be? And I'm drawn you know, Again, I turned my um, painting to power. So that wow. was all, yeah. that painting was to power. Painting. That is awesome. I'm going to quote that for you from now on forever. Pain to yeah. power. Wow. That's, that's all. I had no idea that was part of that story. <laughs> <laughs> Pain to power. Well, we're going to hold it for two seconds, take a short break, and come back to you with more Pain to Power in the next <laughs> segment. Aloha everyone, I hope you've been watching Think Tech Hawaii, but I'm here to invite you to watch me on Viva Hawaii every Monday at 3 p.m. I'm waiting for you. Mahalo. Aloha, my name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. We are the co-hosts of Keys to Success, which is live on Think Tech live streaming network series weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha. Hello, my name is Crystal. Let me tell you, my talk show, I'm all about health. It's healthy to talk about sex. It's healthy to talk about things that people don't talk about. It's healthy to discuss things that you think are unhealthy because you need to talk about it. So I welcome you to watch Quok Talk and engage in some provocative discussions on things that do relate to healthy issues and have a well-balanced attitude in life. Join me. Aloha! Welcome back to the second segment of the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii. We are here with one of my favorite, most incredible people I know, Jason Gretsch, the international fashion designer from Melbourne, Australia. Now, it's all about pain to power, according to our last segment, <laughs> and we're excited to hear more from Jason. So welcome back, Jason. Hello. That was good. I, I, liked, I liked how we ended that segment there. So um, along your journey, and, and when you were going from being basically wanting to be a chef and then in accounting and then you said you were going to be a designer. What did the people around you say? They all thought I was crazy. <laughs> you know, they thought I was nuts and they just thought I had no goals. I remember my sister saying to me, Jason, you're going to end up um, not... Ha you're going to end up not having a job because, you know, because she thought I'd change and she actually thought I was lazy, surprisingly. 
<laughs> what does she think now? She thinks I work too much. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it incredible when you find something that inspires you so much that you just don't even want to stop doing it, but someone, you, you can be seen as lazy. I mean, I interviewed a young girl who does sailing the other week and she's only uh, 17 years old and she said when she was younger everyone thought she was lazy and now she wakes up at four, four in the morning every day to go sailing because she found what lights her up and she doesn't stop. Yeah, that happens. And so did you ever think, oh you, that's, that's your dog, feel free to welcome Jackson, your dog there. Jackson's a celebrity in himself. Uh, this is Jackson. Hello Jackson, oh Jackson's got an outfit on, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what's, his, what's his Instagram? And the adventures of Jackson with an X. The adventures yeah. of J A X O N. Yes, that's right. Oh, awesome! For any of you watching, he has some awesome pictures on there, and of course, you can follow Jason Gretch at Jason Gretch on um, on Instagram there. Uh, so people did tell you it wasn't possible, and then what made you? You just kept doing it and thought, "I'm I'm going to prove them wrong," or how did you how did you train your mind to just keep going? Again, just um, turning into to power. You know, I think that people always knock us down. I think that people always try and put us in a box, but it's up to us to change that and to, you know, make people, or not even make people, just make yourself, just give yourself some time, set some goals and then do it. I think, yeah. So give yourself some time, set some goals and just go for it? Is that? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, yeah. And again, Turn that pain into p power. Pain into power. And I just want to share like a little bit of behind the scenes. So then you basically started doing, would you start sketching? So you, you did study design. Is that You went to yeah. university yeah. and you did a design yeah. course. And then yes. was there a particular type of fashion you gravitated towards at that time? Yes, I was doing women's wear. So then I got a job doing work experience. And then I was there for about... Six years. I started off. Sorry, this is Jackson, and he wants his toy, and he's <laughs> driving us all nuts. So I apologize for that. Um, so then I um, um, <coughs> excuse me, worked there for six years, and then I was, you know, I got a bit bored, and then I started Jason Gretch. And what was the first type of style that you start? Did you start? I know you're very famous for your wedding. Is did you start with bridal couture, or what did you start with? Evening wear. With evening wear? Evening wear, okay. And yep. which makes evening sense wear. now with all the red carpet you're doing. <laughs> yeah. And and then I um, had a store and out and I used to target girls between eighteen and about thirty. And it was all like, you know, really short and fun pa um, party dresses. And then then from there you sort of got inspired to do when when did the bridal inspiration come from? Photo inspiration comes from doing my niece's gown. So I've got um, six brothers and four sisters, and I've got many, many nieces and nephews. One of them got married. Yeah. And then you just did a, me. did a wedding dress, and then you were inspired from that time. With them. Um, right. So, what have been sort of the biggest challenges you faced along the way, just to give people an idea what it's like to follow your kind of career and what kind of um, challenges you can come across? Well, there's, I think there's many of them. I, I think the, the, the biggest one is um, staying true. I think there's lots of outside forces that, that, that try and, or try and pull and gravitate you. So I think that's probably the biggest one. You know, another one would be long, long hours of, Worked on Monday, Tuesday. I did, and um, probably about sixteen-hour days, and I did the same on Wednesday. And I've, you know, and it's Thursday, and I probably worked about forty hours. And you know, um, and also just coming up with new designs. That's that's a big one. So how how do you come up with new designs? Then, like, do you, where do they come from? Do they come from within, and you just sketch? Because I mean, you you sketch them. And then you make the pattern, and then you actually sew them, and you work with the the client. It's just incredible. Your talent doesn't stop. I mean, you're all rounded. Yeah. Well, normally I'll yeah. Thank you. Um, um, I generally design things I 
love. So I brought um, example with the Gladiator. You know, you know there was a powerful time in my life. This year, I did this structured collection, and I partnered with IBM. To, so this was a world first collab. So they asked me, you know, I um, to chat with them, and they asked me to partner with them and to design a collection using um, IBM and Watson's insights. And that was really amazing. And that just taught me, oh, you know, it just gave me data on predicted colors, styles, trends and things like that, which, which is very different to how I've designed in the past. <clears throat> But you know, um, but this collection's been really successful. The the dresses, I mean, at Spring Fashion Week this this year with with IBM that collaboration, IBM Watson, that is absolutely incredible. So that you actually use a computer program to assist you. So is that that's the first time that you had had done that, or that's, that's right, that's right. So it's actually, um, um, Matt Kaiser did the first dress. He you recall um, Mark Kayser did a dress that, that had lights on for the Met Gala. So they did the first gown, well, why? And I did the first ever collection. So, um, yeah, with the com computer system. That's And the colours, I mean, is that something that you found from that as well? Because the colours yes. are beautiful. I love the pastels. The pink, I'm in love with the pink, all the pink. I, I mean, I'm wearing bright pink. I like to uh, wear bright colors, but those pastels ah. and the purple is gorgeous. Thank you. It's, uh, Thank so you. will there be more coming of that? Is there is there yeah. more to that, that that we can expect to... Um... Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Well, I mean, <laughs> be rude not to really. We're just, we are showing some of the images just at the moment now of, um, of Spring Fashion Week. I just... I mean, every collection you do, I'm more and more inspired by. I, I just wonder what you're going to come up with next. And so the next thing that is coming up, I guess, is um, Spring Fashion Week. No, we've just passed that. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. So what's what's next? Next is our bridal collection. Bridal, right? The bridal, so for our brides. Jackson, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> we love having Jackson. He just wants a spotlight. It's okay, Jackson. We'll get you your own show. I think he's just. He's he's just he's just jealous. Um, so, what will you be doing with the bridal? Like, what's what's happening with bridal? Are there some new designs to look out for, or? Yeah. So, um, what I do is I do one evening collection and one bridal collection per annum. So we've done the yeah, so we've just done evening and now it's our bridal. So, but but you know this is all to our really busy. Um, bridal client time so we work with those and we make you know some really awesome new things for them we also do things for the races because that's coming up and that's a really exciting time in Melbourne and then we'll you know start to design again oh yeah ra racing time because that's yeah. huge racing is huge in Melbourne so that's that's something that you've done a bit with in the past and you've been You've, um, what is it? What's the racing, um, yeah, say fashion, is it fashions camp. on the field? Fashions on the field. Yes. yes. So will you be doing that again this year? Not this time. Not no. this time. Not, you, yeah. You've kind of been there and mastered that. <laughs> 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 we got to, we, we're, we're doing IBM. We're mixing fashion technology now. Like, come on. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so just a few things, cause we only have a few minutes left. I'm definitely going to ask you for some advice for, uh, for all those dreamers out there. But firstly, for anyone who has been inspired by your collections, how can they, act, can they you know, order from you or how does that process work? If they yeah, want a wedding dress uh, or a normal dress or how do, how do they yeah. get about that? Um, just um, just um, our website, yeah, which is jasongredge.com. And then so can, can they just order a dress online or do they have to work with you and yes. make a couture or how does that, or is there either, either, and both these days? Yeah, both these days. We can do both of those. 
And the greatest thing is, I mean, anytime I've come and tried on a dress, you haven't even had to make, make it for me. I've actually just put it on and it's fit like a glove. <laughs> so that, I mean, that is one of the things right from the beginning that inspired me is I put on the dress and I just felt so powerful and confident, but we always had fun. And that was the main thing. I mean, we did a few, a few fun events with, um, at balls in, in Melbourne, Australia, and I've got a few photos coming up here with Robert Dipper Domingo. As everyone knows, he's an AFL ambassador and just a hoot of a person to hang out with. And we did have some fun fun days back in the day in Melbourne, Jason, so uh, memories I'll always cherish. Thank you. Um, before, before we wrap up, though, what's, what advice do you have for um, either those who want to follow just any dream and, in, and then in particular those who want to follow a dream in fashion? I just think do it. I think you just have to leave all your opinions at the door, leave everyone else's opinions at the door, and just really focus on what you want to do and do it. You know, I'm a t t type of person that, you know, I mean, me, I'm Western suburbs from Melbourne, working class family with a stutter. You know, I just, you know, who would have thought I'd be, be doing what I do? Definitely not me. So I think the, my best advice would be just believe, really, believe, because it's out there. And if anyone can do it, you can you know I've you know had obstacles which have been really hard and they still are like you know public speaking still kills me this interview is killing me and but you know you just do it that's thank you so much Jason I mean you may say this you know interview and it's not your thing but the words that you say come straight from the heart and I know that they will I mean I was getting goosebumps as you were talking then oh. and I almost get tears in my eyes just because I know how much no it, it really will inspire people watching it to it doesn't matter where you come from where you've been it's just as you say you just get something and you go for it and don't let anyone get in your way so it means so much to my heart to have you on the show today and thank you so so much because I know you're working a million hours a week and um, yeah it means a lot so thank you thank you for all that you do keep shining because your bright star that's just gonna make everyone shine brighter and uh, I can't wait to see you hopefully soon in Australia thank you Chantel Aloha awesome. lots of love from all of us in Hawaii <laughs> bye bye <And> <laughs> ciao ciao see you savvy chicks we'll see you next time bye -bye.